In the last section, we talked about polynomials, what they are, what's made up from them. Uh, we talked about monomials, and we talked about terms and all the definitions of the vocabulary of a polynomial and the degrees of different polynomials and monomials. In this section, we're going to talk about how do we add and subtract polynomials. Well, basically, it's going to be doing very similar work to what we do when we do like terms. When we are adding and subtracting our like terms, they have to have the same variable endings. So it's very similar in this case. So looking at example one, when I see 3a squared, I can only add or subtract that to other a squareds. When I see 8, I can add that or subtract that to all other numbers with no variables. So I see a negative 1 on the other uh, polynomial. And then the 5a shows me that I have to only add and subtract that with other variables that are having endings that are a's. So to add those together, all I can put together at this point is 3a squared plus 5a, and then the 8 minus the 1 is the 7. Now notice that I'm writing this in standard form, where we have the polynomial um, with the descending degrees from highest to lowest. Remember the first term, a square, I'm sorry, 3a squared would be to the second degree, plus 5a, which is to the first degree, plus 7, which is to the zero degree, because there is no variable. Then I look at letter B. Well, again, I can only add things together that go together. Well, if I look at x squareds, I have negative x squared plus 3x squared, which will leave me with 2x squared. Then, if I focus on the x's, I have x's here and I have x's here. I have 5x minus 8x, which is going to give me minus 3x. And then again, I have another type of term, and I have 4 plus 9, which is 13. And again, writing it in standard form, I would have the second degree from the first term, the first degree of the second term, and the zero degree for that third term. Now, just like with integers, to subtract one polynomial from another polynomial, we add its opposite. So subtracting polynomials can be the trickier of the two. I think we can combine like terms pretty easily from all the work we've done with that. So the adding polynomials is not as big of a deal as the subtracting part. The subtracting part is a challenge in the sense that you have to remember that the, when you subtract a polynomial, that all of the terms you have to consider getting the subtraction or the negative. So in a way, we have to distribute that subtract or negative sign through all those terms that we are subtracting. So here's an example. So for letter A, if I take y squared and I subtract 2y squareds, I'm going to end up with minus y squared. Then when I move to the 4y, I am subtracting minus 5y. Well, 4 minus negative 5 really becomes 4 plus 5. So that's going to give me a 9y. And then when I focus on the next piece, and we'll erase some of this for the last one, when I focus on that next piece, I am now going to look at 2 minus negative 3 which really becomes 2 plus 3, which gives me 5. So we end up with negative y squared plus 9y's plus 5. And again, notice the standard form, we're descending order from our degrees of each monomial. So then when I look at letter B. Again, our 5x squared would be the first thing that we would be dealing with. I have 5x squared, and I'm subtracting 2x squared. So I have 3x squared. There aren't any x's to subtract from the 4x, so that can stay as 4x. And then I have a negative 1 minus negative 6, 
which really becomes negative 1 plus 6 or plus 5. So here's a situation for a standardized test that we might have an A, B, C, or D choice. The polynomial represents the sum of x squared minus 2xy minus y squared plus x squared plus xy plus y squared. And we want to know which one of those choices work. Well, again, I'm just going to look at my like terms. And if I have x squareds added to x squareds, that's going to give me 2x squared. If I have xy's, I can add or subtract them to other xy's. So I look at my coefficients, negative 2xy plus xy is going to give me a negative 1xy, which we can just write as negative xy. And then I have a y, negative y squared plus a positive y squared, which is really going to give me 0y squared, so we can just leave it as plus 0. So obviously if I look through at the uh, choices that we have, the answer would have to be here sitting at C because we just kind of put those together and we combined all the like terms. Lastly, we have a situation where we have um, a obviously some sort of an apartment building where a penny is being thrown down from the height of 200 feet and that is being represented here by this equation. So we are seeing that, the, that equation because we are throwing something down. And again, we talked about this with the velocity uh, formula in the last um, section. We also have, at the same time that that is happening, a paintbrush that is being dropped, or it falls, from a different height, but it is falling versus being thrown down. So remember when we talked about that last model, that VT was the velocity. So the first example has the minus 40T because it is being pushed or thrown whereas the second one is just being dropped, so it's not having an extra velocity added to it. It just has the negative 16, which is, again, that gravity pull that is helping it go towards the ground. So this is saying write a polynomial that represents the distance between the penny and the paintbrush after t seconds. Well, I'm hoping that you will see that we have to just subtract these two, and if I was to set this up, I'm going to get negative 16 t squared, minus 40t plus 200. And what we are doing is subtracting from negative 16t squared plus 100. Now, notice how in this time I've done a little bit different than we did a moment ago in the sense that I have lined them up in columns to add them, in this case, subtract them vertically versus just trying to do them horizontally. You can certainly use whichever way works for you. Just remember that if you are going to add them or subtract them vertically, like I have in this situation, that you want to have them lined up in columns. So the t-squareds are over the t-squareds followed by the t's over the t's and the constants over the constants. So again, the one danger of this one is we are actually subtracting way out here. So we got to remember that that subtraction sign has to get to all the terms, especially on that second line. So negative 16 t squared minus negative 16 t squared really becomes negative 16 t squared plus 16 t squared, which cancels. So that will actually cancel itself out. The negative 40 t will actually stay as just negative 40t because we're not subtracting anything from it. And then 200 minus 100. So remember the, the minus out here has to go over here to help this one becomes 100. So the answer to letter A to write the polynomial that's representing the distance between the two at t seconds is actually here negative 40t plus 100. So for b, what we need to do is to figure out, well, after two seconds, what is the distance between these two objects? Well, again, I'm just going to plug in two seconds to figure out where the, ch the distance of them is. We get negative 80 plus 100. Negative 80 plus 100 says that they are 20 feet apart. 
because we combine the two different polynomial models and after two seconds they will be 20 feet apart. Basically this is an easy section. I think that you will find if we are okay with combining like terms and we continue to use the ideas of combining like terms in this section, this will be um, not very difficult for most of us. Just going to be careful, especially on the subtraction side of things, that the subtraction goes through all of the terms.